NTV. You're still watching Morning at NTV. Thank you for staying with us. If you're just joining us, I am Sandra Twino. We are taking you through this morning and, of course, uh, trying to get you in the know of everything that is happening in the country and elsewhere across uh, the globe. Well, my next guest is uh, standing for president and is uh, probably the only president who seems to be preaching and putting the idea of God at the center of elections. His speech yesterday uh, on Tuesday was a sermon on hope and godliness. But on the other thing, he's also an underdog because he's standing on an independent ticket in a race that has 11 candidates. He is uh, one of those who will have an uphill task introducing themselves to Ugandans to first of it all know who he is and uh, what he brings to the board. Pastor Fred Mwesuji, welcome to Morning at NTV. Uh, thank you. I'm glad to be hosted uh, on NTV and I believe we're going to have a very good moment uh, this morning. All right, well, we know that you share a name with a former colonel that lost, recently lost in the primaries in President Yoweri Museveni's village. Have yeah. people sort of confused you for the same person? Yeah, people are confusing me, uh, thinking that uh, it was him standing for the presidents, but uh, it wasn't. Uh, they called me until uh, the time of uh, the nomination. That's when it became clear to the people that it wasn't, it wasn't a colonel, it was a pastor standing. Mm. Yeah. Has that coincidence or comparison sort of affected you in any way or do you think it's likely to affect you? I know uh, as long as I have a, a, an opportunity to explain and tell the people, uh, the few have called me, I've explained it to them and my team has done the same thing so it hasn't really done any negative uh, uh, impact on me. Okay, yeah. well we'd like to know this very calm, composed, uh, mm. pastor turned politician i don't know if you're going to stay a pastor even when you win president or mm -hmm. a presidential seat or you're going to be doing things alongside each other but would like to know who you are who is fred moesuje and most importantly mm -hmm. why do you want to lead us where where does this come from where does the drive come from i uh first of all uh, i'm pastor fred moesuje and i'm a married man i'm <laughs> married to uh, fausta nasubuga and uh, we have five children. And then I, I work with a company called Kaznik Enterprises Limited. Uh, I work there as a deputy director. At the same time, I'm the founder of the House of God uh, worship, team, uh, worship Center Ministries. And then I pastor the, uh, the church called House of God Church. It's in Entebbe. Uh, so, uh, and then at the same time, I'm standing and contesting for the presidents. Uh, what I want to say, as a, as a servant of God, I carry, I believe I carry a message that uh, I call it an ideology that I believe uh, will change or it is the solution to this nation. And, and that is uh, love. And that's why we call our movement the era of love. So we believe that the love based on the fear of God is the only solution that can set uh, Uganda into its next phase. Uh, because uh, when you look uh, into our politics uh, or into the history of our nation, uh, uh, dif at different moments, uh, wars have given birth to certain governments. And then uh, right now we're seeing something else wanting to happen. But uh, I've come to tell the Ugandans and to inform them that we want to have a government birth out of love. It will really cause, they will see a difference with that. They will really see that something that is involving love just like love has brought very many things into existence, we are here because of love. Uh, some people met and, and they, uh, they fell in love and that's why you and I are here. So I want the Ugandans to know that uh, there is something good that can come out of love, not out of anger, hatred and character assassinating. Uh, it will not bring us to something that is good as long as uh, we take that, dis uh, that direction. And then uh, as a citizen of this nation, I'm concerned about the future of this nation. That's what brought me. If I didn't have that conviction within me, within my spirit, still as a citizen of a nation, I would be, co uh, 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 I would be concerned about the future of this nation. Because right now, what we're seeing, we are the age whereby uh, another generation is going to take over the leadership of this nation. Uh, President Museven is not growing younger is growing older and he also knows that the time has come for that. So anyone, uh, any, any responsible citizen who cares about this nation 
uh, they would know that this very moment is the right time uh, for us to engage into this and take over the leadership of this nation. Well, on, on, mm. on actually uh, nomination day, you, mm. you, unlike the rest who were giving us uh, different things that they were going to do for us, uh, yeah. s at least giving us a sneak peek into their manifestos, yeah. you focused more on preaching and, and letting people know about the love of God mm. and all that. But this is also a political season that comes at a time when there are different issues affecting Ugandans from mm. COVID, you know, to the economy, to youth unemployment, to environmental issues. Mm. Was this deliberate for you to just focus on the godly part? Because Ugandans also need solutions, you mm. know, to the issues affecting them. Was this deliberate? Is this the direction that you're going to take on going forward? Uh, you know, there are very many things that have been done over and over again. And... Um, uh, everyone who came and who came after me, they were doing the same thing. And uh, our journey began in, uh, in 2019, December. And then by May, we had finished working on our manifesto. And then uh, in August, I think first, second there, we made the presidential declaration. We have the manifesto. Uh, and we have it. It's here. Even I've come with it. And then, uh, but when you look at the, uh, w what is happening in Uganda, uh, we need a solution. We need something. We need a foundation. If you're going to build a house, uh, they will bring different materials. They will bring uh, bricks, sand, uh, cement, and whatever. But without a proper foundation, whatever you've brought may end up to zero. And so, to me, I believe that uh, it's not the first time. Everyone who has come, they have good manifestos. We also have a very good manifesto. Uh, but uh, very many times people have presented these manifestos and then at the end of the day, uh, Ugandans have remained, uh, they have remained uh, uh, not satisfied. Uh, we've not gone to where we've hoped that these manifestos would take us. So there must be a, a solution, there must be an answer to this. There must be why are these things working out. Because when you look at what is happening, people are putting their hope in individuals, uh, some are going uh, the other way, uh, let us attack someone, let us abuse this person, let us do this and this. Let us find out the weaknesses of the other person so that we may ride over that to take over. So when you look at all that, it will not bath something that is good. And some are presenting very good manifestos and putting them out there. But that's still not, it's not, that's st that isn't still the, the foundation. So to me, when I looked at everything, when you go back to our motto, when you go back to our national anthem, everything, our, our fathers laid this nation using God. So if we speak and, and do everything minus the consciousness of God, thinking that it's only us who have a plan for this nation, and then that we can do whatever we want minus involving God into this, I called it the mind of man. So a man can plan their own things and then they will lie to you. Certain things they will say when they're not meaning it. It's just a lip talk, but it's not something that is coming out of the heart. And sometimes they know how to, 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 to manipulate the population. So I decided because everyone was uh, giving out that. And I told the Ugandans, even right now I'm telling them uh, that uh, the answer and the solution to Uganda and where it is heading to, it's not in a manifesto that a very good manifesto we have it when we take over we will do whatever we have to do there but you need to have an ideology that when you become a president or when you become a leader you need to have something you have you need to have an ideology whereby the people you're working with they will follow that it will be something that pushes them to do whatever they have to do now if someone has the fear of god in them maybe he's a catholic is a muslim uh, whatever denomination but as long as they have the fear of God in them, they will just know that the president is not the first person we have account, uh, wh whom we have to account to, but God. So it will not need the president to be there to monitor certain things. These people will be self-driven to do certain things because they have that fear of God in them. So even if someone presents a manifesto and they have that fear of God, they will know whatever we've presented, uh, if I'm lying to the Ugandans, I will give an account to someone. So they will need to speak things that they mean. So uh, it's, a, it's why I came with the air of love, but this love is not just any other love. It's the love based on the fear of God. This person has to have a fear of God in them, which love is not self-seeking. Uh, it defends, it unites, it honors, it reconciles, uh, uh, it respects. 
So that's what I believe. And, and then when you look at our politics, everyone who comes to speak almost, after they speak and you meet the population, you find them when they want to fight. They speak words of wanting to murder someone. They speak whatever thing, like there is no hope, like Uganda is heading towards a certain direction. And, uh, and because of that, uh, people have that kind of thinking. And, and then some people, yesterday I had an interview that were telling me, politics is a data game. Then if it's a data game, then you're voting. Someone is going to come and play a data game with you. So whatever you're doing, it's, it, it shows that the results won't be good. So I told them, we can have politics, which is that we don't need to be doing things in the dark, lying to people to give us votes and promising things we're not going to be able to do uh, because we want to get somewhere. Uh, but we need to do things. We need to work together as Ugandans, telling the Ugandans the truth, telling them the reality of Uganda. Because some people come and promise things which they cannot do within the five years. But they know it that when they tell it to the population, they will buy that, they will accept that, or some other person can come and then they attack a, a particular person. And then when you look at it, it's like the vision, maybe. Let me give an example. When you look at it, it's like they have a vision. Their vision is to fight Museven. Now, that is not a vision that Uganda needs. Uh, Ugandans, you need someone who will come and tell you a vision, like the vision we have, uh, that uh, we need. Uh, our vision is a, a prosperous, godly nation in which the citizens take pride. Now, when we use the ideology of love based on the fear of God, it will enable us to achieve that. So, but if someone is coming and telling you that, no, Museven is the problem, uh, time will come and Museven won't be there. All right. Yeah. Well, having the fear of God at the back of our minds and also looking at the era of love, like you put it, mm -hmm. would also love to dive into your manifesto a little bit to find out mm -hmm. what plans you have to increase uh, the country's same GDP yeah. uh, for the next five years once you put into into office. Yeah, the plans that I have, um, uh, one of the plans that I have is to, uh, uh, let me first go to the part of uh, agriculture. Uh, when you look at Uganda, it is gifted by nature, and uh, el almost 11 million Ugandans are involved in, uh, directly and indirectly into the agriculture. They earn through that. Uh, so I'm looking at, uh, because currently, uh, uh, from, our, from our budget, uh, we, we pick almost 3.7%, and that's what we invest into agriculture. So uh, when I become a president, we want to increase that to 15%. When we increase it to 15%, it will enable us to, 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 to facilitate, to boost the agricultural sector uh, so that the Ugandans may benefit out of that. How are you going to do that? What are some uh, of the So the, the plans things we're going to do, uh, we, we're going to work on the roads. Uh, we're going to, uh, another thing I'm looking at is if we can put the uh, national television, which is only focused on agriculture. It will so you want to turn, say, UBC into uh, no. a, a station? No, UBC will remain that, like this uh, TV, which is called Nat Geo. Mm. It's all focused on uh, uh, animals and whatever, everything that is there. So if we have a, a television that is uh, uh, broadcasting uh, disadvantages, challenges, the advantages of agriculture, uh, right from 24-7, uh, people will be knowing where to get those ideas from and it will help them. Uh, to, 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 to have that. Then another thing we're looking at is to, uh, is to bring back cooperative societies. Uh, if we bring them back, they help to unite both people who are, who are practicing agriculture at a small scale and at the large scale. And then that helps us to set a certain price uh, because if we have that, it means if someone has involved themselves in agriculture, maybe in, uh, in production of uh, uh, producing, maybe growing beans, uh, because one time I was involved into that, you would go and get maybe a, a kilo of beans at 500 shillings. But then on your way coming to the market, they tell you it has reduced to what? To maybe 300. So that would affect everything. So uh, if you invested a million into that, then you're going to make a loss of that. But if you bring back the cooperative societies, it will help to set a certain price. I, I believe my government will have that. We will be able to buy from the cooperative society so that we can control that. So that also, I believe, it will do something like that. And then another thing is introducing uh, maybe a cooperative bank and then whereby uh, where farmers can go and uh, get uh, loans at a low interest rate. Uh, uh, that will help them to, to, to improve on their, agri uh, on their agriculture, uh, achieving what they want to achieve because they will have a financial support. 
and then also the government providing uh, providing quality uh, quality seeds and then also putting their uh, training centers and then also encouraging agriculture back into schools because right now you see it's almost stripped off mm. uh, yeah and then we are a country that is based on that but still it's not that it, sh it just shows that years from now if we don't take this back into schools it will be gone so I'm looking at all this that once we do this it will increase our GDP yeah. So agriculture is the, your main focus of trying to push Uganda's GDP, is it? Uh, yeah, and also if we get involved, and, and, uh, because right now we have minerals, we have like gold, uh, we have uh, 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 pet uh, uh, petroleum. So when we look at all that, because right now uh, the gold that we have or the minerals that we have, you'll find out that the government is losing a lot of uh, that income because there is some... There are some people involved in that, and they're doing that not through the government, but doing it at a personal level, and that is uh, escaping out of the country because we do clearing and forwarding. One time I got involved with certain whites, and they had uh, too much gold, and were taking it out of the country, but not in the right process. So uh, when, we, when we come into the government, because one thing that the problem that we have is implementation. We have, a low, we have very many good policies, but the problem is implementing them. That's one of the problems that we have here as a nation. So I believe when Air of Love comes into power, or when Pastor Fred comes into power, we will implement every policy that is good for this nation, and that will add our GDP. And then another thing is about corruption. Uh, we lose a lot of money uh, through corruption. So when you lose money that is supposed to do uh, some kind of infrastructure uh, program, that means we're losing also that out. All right, two mm. issues. Yeah. Uganda has uh, the youngest population, and most of the people that are probably mm. um, excited to vote this year are yeah. the younger generation. Mm. You know, they, they, they want their issues listened to. The, the whole issue of unemployment among young people is uh, dire. Yeah. You know, I know there are those that feed off hand to mouth. There are those that are in, in very underpaying jobs. There are those that are not employed at all. What mm. message do you have for these young people mm. that hope that for the next five years they will have a leader that will appeal, that will listen to their issues and actually try to put in place initiatives or ideas or uh, different uh, avenues for them to actually benefit? Yeah, one of the things why uh, the young population uh, they are facing the issue of unemployment, it's because some people are selfish. Uh, that's, why, that's why I told you that uh, everything for me is based on this love. If we have this love, you'll find that many things w uh, will move a different direction in this nation. So because of that selfishness, you will find out that uh, uh, some people are keeping uh, different projects to themselves or they are giving them out to a particular group of people and uh, letting out the others. Or also concerning our policies, you may find that uh, if maybe we're going to construct a road, you will find it out that, uh, uh, that the government, most times they will hire people from uh, abroad instead of involving Ugandans themselves here. Because if you involve them, still they'll get the jobs, they'll find or something to do. And then if you teach them the importance, like what we've been talking about, the agriculture part of it, because uh, uh, only agriculture can uh, create employment for the, young, for the young generation. But the problem is they have not been taught that uh, there is something good out of that. Or if they have been taught, they have not seen the realization of that. So most of them end up seeing that it's better to sell off the land in Uganda and then fly to an Arab nation to work. But when you change that uh, using the love and when they can see results of that, uh, you, you will find out that the employment will increase in Uganda, especially the agriculture itself. And then another thing, uh, when I come into power, the government will come in to support the micro small businesses. It will support them uh, through giving them loans, uh, through helping them, to, uh, giving them training sessions. So it w we will get involved directly with the youth and then whatever help that will come from the government, I'll make sure, or my government will make sure that it gets to them. Because most times you find that money is released to go into these youth projects, but then uh, it leaves 
the government at 100%. By the time it gets to the youth organization or to a youth group, it's something like 10%. So the 10 that they have remained with cannot help them because in the first place when you told them to find something to do, uh, they gave you a budget, they placed something that they had 100% hope, but now you've given them something that is less than, actually less than even 20%. So they cannot get anything out of that. So me, I'm promising them this, I'm promising the Ugandans this, the young generation, that only someone who's going to tell you the truth is going to listen to you. I'm a good listener. Uh, and someone who's going to be able to put in practice what they are telling you, uh, that is the true leader, not someone who's giving you false hope, who's telling you something they're not going to do. But uh, someone or a government or a leader who will come and be able to make sure that whatever hope that you have to receive from the government will reach you directly and then you'll use it for whatever reason you, uh, you, 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 you asked it for. Yes, yeah, so that's what I can tell uh, the young generation. Then another thing, uh, uh, baby, because some of them are unemployed because of the education. They're known, they're same skilled. Uh, so if we improve the education system, if we put their uh, grants that can help them to study, because I'm also here, uh, one of the reasons I never graduated was because I went through challenges of fees. I stopped in the first year. So I know how much it pains. I know what you go through. Uh, at a particular time, I applied somewhere to get a loan. I, it, it couldn't work. Uh, you needed to know someone to get something. Uh, and yet I had the brains, but I couldn't. Uh, so I know that. So that has limited me also somehow because I couldn't. But uh, I want to assure the young uh, population that uh, we will make sure that you receive quality education. We will stand with you at all levels of your studies so that you may achieve that too because it helps you uh, to be able to, 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 to stand at, inter at an international level to compete for such jobs as well. Very interesting thoughts from you, uh, yeah. Pastor Fred Moesuji. Yeah. He's by the contesting to be your next president in the 2021 election. So he's definitely going to be on your ballot paper. And you, you, you too can send us your thoughts on his manifesto. At least we are diving into. You mention a lot of love. You talk a lot about love. You talk a lot about, you know, the God. You talk about a lot about uh, reaching out to the people and yeah. making sure you look at them. Yeah. Um, you associate with them openly and freely with love. Yeah. Staying with the issue of young people and also the issue of agriculture, you do realize that majority of the agriculture pro uh, um, activities are happening in the villages mm -hmm. and young people do not really want to stay in the villages. This mm -hmm. is why, like you mentioned, they want to travel out of the country, maybe say land and actually travel out of the country. Mm -hmm. How are you going to make agriculture appealing to young people. What are some of the strategies that you have in place mm -hmm. to make agriculture appealing to the younger generation? Uh, the good thing, I'm a preacher. Uh, if you can talk to someone before you apply something practically and then you explain to them and then bring it to the practical bit of it because uh, if, you f if you fail to meet someone at the heart level, then even if you introduce something practically, they won't take it on because they have not understood that. Eh? Uh, so the first thing I believe as a leader is to have the ability to communicate uh, to, to your people or to be able to communicate to these, uh, uh, to these young people and then give them hope again and tell them that whatever, uh, whatever programs we have regarding agriculture, forget about what has been happening, forget about uh, uh, that you've been investing into this and then you've not been uh, uh, getting the profits out of it because that's the reason. Because they've been involved in this and have not been realizing anything that would take them on. So that's why they had given up onto that. So to bring them back into that, you must make sure that whatever you're telling them, you'll keep your word. That your government you're bringing that sure. Let me give an example of the price, fixing price. That uh, if I tell them that we will not accept the price to fall from this level to this level, the government will always come in to purchase the excess or to purchase the little that was remaining. So, uh, and then you come and do it, it will, uh, it, uh, it, will, uh, it will lead to others who thought maybe it was a lie to come because they'll see that their friends, when they go out to carry out agriculture to farm, or when they harvest, they're not making losses, they're receiving back. 
So once they see that, the rest will come. Just like people who, who are going into Arab nations to work. The first people who went there, the, some other people feared to go there. They thought maybe it wouldn't be uh, something that is real because they're telling them you'll get a, a job, it's at one million, something they're going to be sold into slavery. But after others had gone, and then after seeing that they were doing something back home, so the rest also started uh, coping up with the rest. And then we started seeing other companies coming in to take uh, our, our population into those uh, nations to work. Though there are some disadvantages just are there. So the issue is that uh, they will see there they, they should be something that whatever you've discussed, whatever you've brought up, whatever policy you've put up, that the government will be able to follow that policy. Like what I've said, if we put that, uh, uh, if, if I've told them that we will create a cooperative bank that will help them, and then they see it there, and then some people go there and get the loans, and they see that it is actually happening it will cause them to join agriculture as long as they see results. It's just like the issue of taxes. Uh, if people are paying taxes and then they're not seeing the realization of that, they're not seeing why they're paying the taxes. So, but the moment they see that if we pay taxes, the roads are there. If we pay taxes, this is happening. We pay taxes. So th there won't be that too much argument over taxes. So the issue is about, uh, uh, the issue is about uh, putting results there. As long as what you've told them, they are seeing it, they'll come and join. Well, from mm. my very simple interaction with you this morning, I can mm. tell that you're a very laid back, calm person. But you're going to be interacting with different presidential candidates and also different mm. people, uh, young people, older people that are a bit, you know, straight up loud and very mm. pushy. How, what are your chances of actually winning in this election? And how, w when you sit back and you analyze the situation, mm. one can pretty much say you're an underdog. You're standing on the independent ticket. Mm. You probably do not would imagine because you, you, you're new to us. There are no structures. There are new, no teams in the different districts. And already some of the candidates were complaining about the short period of time for you to mm. campaign. What are your chances to actually win as president in the 2021 elections? Yeah, before, uh, before everyone knew me, there are other people also who knew me. And uh, before they also knew what I was going to do, they never thought I would get where I've gotten. Uh, so when we are doing this, when I introduced this to them, they never even thought we would reach where we've reached. Uh, but I'm a man of results and, and I'm a man of faith. And uh, I don't do things. Uh, I do them most times because I have a spiritual conviction to do them. Uh, to me, it's not a surprise to be where I am, and I know where I'm heading to, and I've seen that happen throughout my life. Uh, and another thing is uh, uh, because no one expected us to get where we've gotten, and we've gotten there. Uh, at first, if they ask the media that, uh, if uh, pr uh, uh, presenting maybe the uh, supporters' forms, uh, who would be second? They wouldn't say that it would be us or someone who is an independent. They would say uh, the political parties or anything like that. But when people saw it that uh, after seven, we were able to be the second to finish up those 98 districts, almost 100 of them. And then uh, what comes to mind if someone does something like that? Because it requires a team. So we have a team that was doing that. We knew that this is a target we want. So we did whatever we had to do and, and attained our results. At the same time, again, we did what we're supposed to do and attained whatever we've attained now. Even right now, we're doing whatever we know, and then we're going to attain the results we want. It is, uh, uh, to the media and the people who do not know us, they may think we are underdogs. But to those who know us, who are not close to us, they know we are not. We are serious people. And Uganda is going to be shocked at what it's going to see. Uh, it's not about shouting or doing what. Uh, that really causes results. You can't be in a home where my husband shouts a lot and this and that and then and that. But when you're not seeing results. But then some other person who's silent, quiet. But when they're doing whatever they're doing and the results are there. I think if you're an employee, you would employ such a person. And someone who talks a lot, but without results. So I mean, one thing that I know is this, that uh, I'm a man of faith, I'm a man who believes in God, I'm a man who follows the mind of God. So I don't know, I, I, I don't have only, a, how should I bring up this? 
I'm not into this uh, only on the side that is physical. I'm into this also because I have a side that is spiritual. My life follows both trends. So actually, if I had only the physical part, maybe somehow I wouldn't be here because it, it requires a lot of courage. It requires a lot of, uh, a, a lot of um, assurance for mm -hmm. this to happen. Uh, so uh, we are not underdogs. We've laid down plans for this. That's why I told you that we began in 2019 on the 23rd of December. No one knew that we are doing that. And because of that, what we're doing, that's the reason why we're here today. And by May, we had finished our manifesto. So everything is in order. So we're following both the physical part of everything. That's why we've come here to talk to the population. And we're following also up about, uh, we're following also the spiritual part of everything. Mm. So we are known under those. Another thing, we have people, we've placed people all over. In the different uh, so teams? Uh, you have teams on ground? Uh, yeah, we have teams the on the ground, yeah. We have, because how do, how do you collect these signatures without that team? Because you can't be everywhere at the same time collecting these signatures. That means you should be having people with you who believe in your dream and then uh, you, to be able to have such results. So whatever we've done, I'm not doing these things alone. Mm. No, we're doing it with a team. We're doing it with, uh, with well-wishers to achieve whatever we are achieving. All right, maybe let me just show the, the public uh, mm. your book, your manifesto. Uh, I think, I don't know if uh, my director can pro probably zoom this in. This is Fred Moesuje's manifesto. And if anyone really wants to know more about uh, this particular uh, presidential candidate, you then you, def you definitely have mm. to look at this book. I, is orange your color? Because I think this is orange. Is this the yeah, color that you're going that to be? Yeah, that is our color. But we have to set that out with a... Uh, uh, my brother Tumukonde is also using the same color, mm. uh, but uh, because, like I told you, we came out first, we did the presidential declaration first. So I believe we're going to sit with him and discuss, and he will see that we have a point, and he will let us use our color because we had already branded and done everything. Mm. He came in late after math to join this race. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pastor Fred Mwesuje, for joining mm. us today on Morning at NTV and mm. for giving us your thoughts on what you have to offer Ugandans come 2021 in case they vote mm. you into power as uh, the president for the next five years. It is now up to you, the, the audience and the public, to you, the citizens, to decide who you want by, of course, exercising your vote and uh, voting in 2021 and choosing who you want to be your leader. Thank you once again for joining us. And, of course, we'll be seeing you later in the presidential campaigns as well. Uh, thank you too for hosting me. All I right, believe you'll have a good moment. He's uh, moving on the manifest of Era of Love and of mm -hmm. course God believing that with that in mind everything else can fall in place well and peacefully. We're moving